This is the rebate joint, or rebated butt joint. One of the simplest methods of joining timber, it's used in a wide variety of projects, large and small. The concept is simple. Take a section out of one piece of timber and butt another piece of timber into the cutout or rebate. It's held together with ordinary wood glue, but can be strengthened with fasteners in larger versions than this one. It's simple to make, doesn't involve any fancy tools, and can be used effectively in junior technology classes. In fact, there are probably millions of junior pencil box projects around Australia using this simple joint. So if it's such a simple timber joint, and it's a fairly simple process to go through, is it really worth still teaching students how to make one of these? Hi, I'm Colin Klupik, and yes, I think it is. I think it teaches students a wide range of really useful skills, particularly in the junior years. So why don't we have a look at how to make one of these, and we'll talk through these skills as we make it. You'll need the simple hand tools for woodworking as shown, and a nice sharp pencil. The aim is to cut out a section that is the same thickness of the two timbers being joined. One piece then gets rebated into the other. Once again, it's easy to place one piece of timber over the top of the other one and align it to the edge with a square. Mark out the thickness and then mark a line about halfway down the sides. The depth of the rebate can vary. It's usually about a third to a half the thickness of material. In this example, we'll use half. Since the timber is 19 millimeters thick, we'll set the marking gauge to 9.5 millimeters. When demonstrating this to students, ask them what's half of 19. Guaranteed, there'll be plenty who say 8.5 millimeters. I don't know why, it's just one of those weird associations people make. Use the marking gauge to scribe a line down the edge stopping at the pencil line. Then use the marking gauge across the top on the end grain. This can be tricky when handheld and usually ends up with a dodgy line. Yep, that's not great. Encourage students to use a vise. You can use two hands to make a definite groove. Then place the timber in a bench hook. Cut along the waist side of the line. Start slow until the saw wants to cut freely. This can take a few strokes to get going. Stop early to check your cut alignment. Students will want to rush this part, but it's worth showing them how quickly you can go off course, like here. Which is why I'll correct this now. Continue cutting to half the thickness, and then make an intermediate cut between the first cut and the end of the timber. Place your thumb in the round part of the chisel handle and curve your fingers around the blade. Then vertically pair out the material, starting on the outside and working your way back. When you get close to the line, use the groove made by the marking gauge to guide the chisel. You can see here that fine adjustments will be necessary. To do that, keep your fingers well clear as you pair out these last few shavings. You can place the other piece of timber in the rebate to see how you're going. If you need to take more out of the bottom edge, you'll be pairing across end grain. You'll need a super sharp chisel for this.
And still, there's a bit more adjusting to do. You can also use a steel ruler to check for flatness across the joint surface. Use a pencil to mark out material that still needs removing. Once you get to this stage, it's a good idea to check your progress. And you can do that a few ways. All you need to do is lap this over one of the corners on the other piece of timber and just check for gaps. Now, this one's looking pretty good actually. And if I hold that up to that corner, you can see here that the fit is actually starting to work quite well. And that's probably the minimum you'd want to expect from your students. They probably won't get that the first time. But the good thing about using smaller pieces of timber like this is that you can always just turn them over to the other side and then you can do a practice joint on that end. And in fact, you can do it on this one and on that one as well. And then just to test for fit, you can just continue to lap them over the edge or even over the face of the timber. Remember, what we're looking for is a nice 90 degree cut, uh, which gives us a nice clean fit with no gaps. Another way to check this is to lay the joint flat on the bench and test it with a square. This one is looking pretty good so far. And like with all joints, it's good to practice them multiple times with your students before applying them to a project. This develops skills, dexterity, patience, and quality. Following the same steps as before, I'll make another one on the other end. But wait, I'll stop here. Marking on end grain without a vise, that's a dud. Use a vise. Ah, that's much better. Check that out. Make the tenon saw cuts, being careful with your fingers and to ensure that you're not tracking off course. Then chisel out the waste and check for final adjustments. And you'll see here that I've now numbered this joint as number two, so I don't confuse it with the first one. Encourage students to number theirs as well. They can then track their progress, and so can you, helping you give useful feedback. Check for square. This one looks good too. Time to glue it together. I'll use this shorter piece. Ensure there is enough glue for full coverage, but not too much that it would run off if you held it up at an angle. I'm going to place this on a small piece of paper so that any excess glue doesn't stick the joint to my bench. This joint will need a clamp and a check for square when clamped. You might need a couple of squares to do this, that is, one that fits on the inside corner. Then leave the joint to dry. So there you have it, the simple timber rebate joint. At the beginning of this video, I asked the question, is it still worth taking the time to teach students how to make something as simple as this? Well, based on the skills that you can develop, as we've seen in this video, I think the answer is still a resounding yes. And I encourage you to practice this particular timber joint with your classes. We'll see you in the next one.